now, if you would, let me introduce you to my world record leg trap. Hey, folks, do me a favor. Practice CPR, catch, photo, and release. The future of vision is truly in your hands. Big fish. Big fish! in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of Monster Pike. The Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Hunt is on aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. Hey, we've got something really exciting for you tonight, and uh, I think we're going to have fun with it. You know, I travel to sports shows a lot, and when I'm going around the sports shows, I have people ask me a few questions, and one of those questions is, where? Where do you fish? Well, I don't know too many people that want to give up where they fish, but in all honesty, where is a benefit because it builds confidence. If you're in a situation where you understand the climate, you understand the food source, the location, and all this, and how you can put it together, then wares are important. If you don't understand that, wares are absolutely the worst thing you can have because you run to somebody's spot because they told you to. Unless the conditions are exactly right, it means nothing. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to go into some of that. We're going to pinpoint some of these locations, and we're going to have a little bit of fun with it. Another thing we're going to do tonight is show you reality. <laughs> yeah, reality. I shot my show for over 30 years, totally authentic. Everything's real. Never did a bloopers reel because, quite frankly, tensions are a little high when you're doing it. You don't stage it. Don't go redo it. So that being said, I oftentimes avoided, if you will, the bloopers. However, it's not to say that we don't have mistakes. And tonight we're going to identify one of those mistakes. But before we get into the identifying that mistake, let me just tell you a little bit about this young man as we get to it because he was really a great trooper. You know, we put the call out last week for uh, for folks to send us some of their opening weekend pictures, some of the things that you did, the accomplishments you made. We've got an awful lot of people out there watching this show already, and if we get lucky and we get people to share it on their groups and on their pages and the followers pick up and what have you, then we'll grow largely quickly, and that's what we're trying to do. So that being said, I'm going to introduce you to a little bit of uh, what that's all about before we do. Let me tell you this, though. You can get on the show and you can re relate to the show a number of different ways. One of the ways to interact with us on the show is to find us on Facebook at Fish and Sticks TV. You can private message us on Facebook's Fish and, St Fish and Sticks TV page. You can also send us emails to bob.m at fishingstickstv.com. We'll handle those accordingly. If you're pre-registered, you'll also be able to dial in the phone. I have the phones on hold right now, so if you're lined up and get on, uh, we'll be taking your phone calls tonight, and that's what it's all about. Like I said, we had a number of people respond to the call out for pictures. Here's just one picture. This is Mark Boombach. Now, Mark was out waiting. He was fishing opening weekend for smallies, I believe, and ended up with this absolutely superb 30-inch trout. I don't know how many of us out there wouldn't appreciate that, especially the way to start your season. Mark's done a really good job. He estimated the fish about 10 pounds, and I'm going to have to say he's probably pretty accurate. 
Another friend of mine um, that's been around me for a long time, Bob Jacobs up there from northern Wisconsin. He went to the southern part of the state for the Wisconsin opener, and I guess by the looks of things, you could say Bob succeeded. You know, I had opportunities to fish with this man on more than one occasion, and he's intense when it comes to chasing fish. So my hat's off to him. That's a really, really nice fish. You guys are going to meet this guy as we move on in the season two, Jim Gracca. He's from Chicago, Illinois. Jim likes to pound the bass. He does largemouth, smallmouth, and yes, every now and then I can talk him into going and doing a muskie. And that's a key thing. If you have multi-species diversity, it brings you to another level in terms of fishing, and Jim's accomplished that in a big way. Well, I got another gentleman that I've known for years and years and years, although we don't hang together anymore. Craig Thaler and I go back, oh, 35, 30 years anyway. Craig was out fishing a tournament. He was fishing a tournament out in uh, the East Coast, and um, he hammered this absolutely gorgeous rockfish. And when you talk about something that pulls, these things do pull. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, Bob said he was the largest fish caught in the tournament in recent history. So my hat, I mean, excuse me, Craig did. My hat's off to Craig. It was a 52 inch, 43.6 pound fish, spawned out. So imagine what that thing would have been with some eggs in it. That would have been pretty impressive. Not to say that it isn't. My last but not least on tonight's show I want to show you guys is a young man. The reason I'm showing you this is Todd Cleese sent this in to me. This is Connor, his son. You know, folks, I said it before, we need to get the young people involved in the sport. Uh, we fish pretty intensive when we go out, and there's no question about we spend a good deal of time trying to prepare ourselves to be as good as we can be on the water. But when you're young, young at heart, and your dad gets you out on the water, that's important. My hat's off to Connor. Those trout were pretty impressive. So with that being said, I think it's time we, uh, we start to unlock some of the mystery on tonight's show and, uh, and just see what this thing is all about. So if you would, I'm going to take you in. And, and I said we're going to be talking about mapping. Earlier on in the season, I was talking about how we're going to break down structures and how we're going to break down maps. And I'm not going to be afraid to tell people where to go. But in order for me to tell somebody where to go, I also need to give them the information that's necessary. Because if they're not getting the information, again, like I said in the beginning, it's worthless. So let's take this for just for what it's worth. I'm going to break down this part of the lake. We're going to be fishing on this particular segment that we're talking about. This is on the southwest side of Ferris Island. So those of you familiar with Lake of the Woods, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. We focus on real small areas around there. And the reason for that is the current. Now the current in Lake of the Woods, for instance, runs from the south to the north, or basically southeast to the northwest. And that being said, it sets up these fish. There's patterns that these fish develop, and if you understand the sensitivities of what's going on, you can be able to be on top of these fish before anybody else. In fact, I'm going to be a little embarrassed because on the very first clip we're going to show you, I'm actually still eating a sandwich after shutting down the boat. So it is what it is. Like I said, it's totally, it's authentic, it's real. During the periods when the, when the lake is exhibiting the backup in currents, these areas become a little treasure house. Now when I say backup, that's because the lake runs, like I said, southeast to northwest. But when you get that monster wind that comes out of the northeast, comes out of the north, and it pushes all that lake water down from the top, these currents have a tendency to create their own undertow. And when it settles down, the wind goes away, these currents back up. And it's key to understand what to look for. If you don't know what to look for, you're driving down the woods, driving down the lake of the woods, look for the stance of the buoys. Look for the angle that the buoys are setting because that will certainly tell you what the current is. If it's a natural current going south to north or if it's an influence current that's being taken on by wind pushing the water from the north to the south. These are key, key things. All right, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you just a little bit here before we jump into this, because I want you to understand. Uh, for years I've done the show, and 
I'm pretty direct, to be honest with you, in the boat because, again, we're shooting totally authentic. You can get hurt in these boats, and we're sometimes in remote waters, and we don't want anybody to get hurt. But the bottom line is you can't redo reality. So that said, it takes is a little bit of an emotional control, if you will. And I've had people email me and call me and say, my goodness, are you mean to your guests in the boat? You, you tell them to do this and you tell them to do that. Well, folks, this is because it's real. Think about this. You're out fishing with your buds and you get that big fish on. And all of a sudden, your passive attitude, if you will, the common sense you have about you goes right out the window because you start to feel the adrenaline, you start to feel what's going on, and the fear of losing that fish. Now we're going to break down, we're going to break down the actual, uh, the actual structures that we caught these fish on, and I want you to, if you will, um, I'm going to take you back here real quick, and we're going to talk just a little bit about where we're at. Okay, now, you ought to know this spot if you're on Lake of the Woods. This is south of Bishop Point. This is actually the basin, the Bishop Bay Basin. Now, if you're looking at that system right now, you can see there is an enormous amount of structure to fish in there. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what do you, what do you, how do you choose? Where do you start? My goodness, there's hundreds and hundreds of acres, if not thousands of acres of water, and there's hundreds and hundreds of acres of great fishing. Maybe you would like to come into this complex right here and start fishing that complex. The problem with that complex isn't the fact that it's there. It isn't the fact that it does or doesn't hold fish. It's that it's so large that you can't fish it successfully and be on the bite when the bite window's taken place. That's a key thing to remember. So you might want to look at isolated areas, smaller areas, manageable areas, areas that you can go into and, and just really work them quickly, what we call gun and run. Now, if we take a look at the, the, the current we were talking about, I'm going to walk you right straight in to where we were fishing. All right, watch this, folks. This is where we're going. We're going right in here. So what you're about to see right now, I've just pinpointed it for you on that map. Okay, again, it was after dinner. I'm still chewing on a sandwich when we came down the lake. But I want you to listen and watch what's going on. And if this doesn't pull you to the edge of your chair, nothing's going to. And they like prop baits here. My number one bait on here is an awaker. Well. Let her rip. He's not ready. Bruce Fannis, the gentleman fishing with me, is a real trooper trust me if you've gone through what he's about to go through and we're still able to pick up a rod and keep going like my hats off to bruce fannis hmm. come on girls let's go Here we go. Yes. Oh. Big fish, too. Remember that adrenaline? You think it's pumping? Nothing wrong with that. Should have had her. Big fish. 
loaded the rod heavy. Don't you always check your hooks after you miss one? See if they're still, around, still on the bait? The structure that we're fishing extends out about the length of a football field. There's four or five isolated humps out there with cabbage around each one of them. We're fan casting a really, really large area. If you pay close attention, this is going through here tonight, you'll hear three or four different boats that go through while this is happening. Two of them actually parked and watched us. That was a bummer. That's like a good one. Yeah, that was, I mean, it was a heavy fish. Mm -hmm. Very heavy. Felt very, very, very heavy. Something of the category we're looking for. But I have seen multiples on here. Hmm. They just crawl up here when they get low light? Yep. Man, that one felt good though. She might eat that prop coming through there. Here we go. Be right. Another one. Nice fish. No resistance on the hook set though, that's dangerous. I don't think this girl's hooked very well at all. She's staying down. I can't see it. Big fish. Ooh, nice fish, Bob. Yeah, very big fish. Coming your way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's 50 plus. Yep. Okay, coming your way. Yep, ready. Put her head down in the rim. Oh. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Dang. Okay. Dang it in the net. Got the hook in the net. Just a minute. Got the hook in the net initially. You gotta lift that back rim. Hang on a minute. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See how we can do this. I got the hook, that hook got hooked in the net initially. Okay, we're gonna be on the reef in a second. Oh, she's gonna get off, she's gonna get off. We gotta go that way on her. Trust me folks when I tell you the disaster hasn't even started. This is not the way you net a fish. Oh, I know. It got tangled in right away. Oh, you want me to cut that hook? Ah, no. That's our only security. Uh, let's see. How can we do this? Where's the boat at right now? Okay, we're safe. Uh, uh, can we cut those back hooks? The front ones, I mean. Yes, we can. Just got to get an apex. Here. Shit. Careful. I got that damn hook on my knee. Oh, I got the hook in the mini. Okay. okay, hang on a minute. <sighs> Shit. Oh, man. Well, I have to see. I can't see. I'm sorry. I'm 
gonna go your way with it. I got her tail. I got her tail. Cut this one right here. You're not gonna cut them all. You have to cut just the one. How many out there can relate to this? You can't cut them all, I guarantee I'm you. I'm trying to just cut one back. <laughs> Tell you what, here's a challenge for you. Count the cuss Watch words. Your fingers. Okay, let's see if we can get that net open to get her in it. Okay, she's ours. No, how's your leg? Not good. Okay, hang on a minute. Where are we at? We're past the reef. Is it all the way in? Is it? Careful. Huh? Is it is it in you? Yeah. You want me to you want me to go in? Folks, if you've something? never looked at yeah. the major hook on Let's a bulldog, it. you'll know it's a big piece of iron. Okay. Let me get her unhooked. And you can imagine where we're gonna be headed when this is done. It's a stupid thing to do. Where's the nipix? Right here. You didn't have the net inflated. When you come in, it was all bundled up. You got to open those nets up when they come in, especially big ones. Because big ones don't like it when they hit that net. Where's my extractors? Okay, hold on. Well, we get him unhooked. And they get you unhooked. It's amazing that we got this fish. And this was the second one that was on there. There's another one in there too. Okay. She. What lure did you get? Where was it? Right here. I was going to put it on the other bait, the other. Uh, okay, she's going to be fine. Okay. Oh, I got the net. I'm going to get her down in the net. That's what I'm trying to do. Now she's in the net. Let's get this out of here. We got a good drift, we're away from it. But we gotta get that out of your leg. Yeah, it'd be all right with me. Pardon me? It'd be alright with me. Yeah, I know it. Damn it. I didn't know you had lures laying around back there. I was gonna put that one on the as I took that. Swing bait off, I was going to put it on the... On the it was my fault. Okay, let's get this out of here. She's healthy. She's healthy. She's not wrong with her. 
he's in good shape but that was quite the net job I gotta say that was quite the net job that was a little panicky there for a second but we got we kept our heads and we got her under control but we need to get that out of your leg okay so give me a second let me undo this Unfortunately, you can't cut super braid with anything but a scissors. I can't knot like I can Dacron. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pull this line through. Get this on. Jay the just chimed in and invited me to come on down and do some tarpon and shark fishing. Hey Jay, I've been down there and uh, trust me when I say I enjoy the shark fishing and the tarpon fishing down there. So who knows, hey, maybe our paths will cross someday. Pass the barb on that on your leg. I don't know. You wanna take pictures and this? What, what you, let's do that and take care of the fish. If you like, that's fine. Well yeah, but you can't move around like that. Well I know, but you wanna get you wanna get your picture and She's all. okay. She's in the water. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. She's fifty, fifty one inches. Yeah. Okay. Folks, <laughs> this is no laughing matter. We got a hook in Bruce's leg right now. We're trying to put this fish up so you folks can see it real quick. This is a very nice fish. She's over 50 inches. I'm going to bring her up. I'm going to lay her on the deck. Typically don't do this. And I'll lift her up for a picture. And uh, then we'll get her back in the water. And, uh, and then... Uh, you folks can get a chance. I'm not going to lay her on the deck. I'm just going to grab her. I can get a hold of her here. If she lets me. Good girl. Stay there. I don't want her on the deck. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh. You need to take it the other way, Bruce. Yeah, I know. I can't. His elbow's in the way. You got her? Yeah. Got her? Got it. You got her? Oh, don't, 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 don't. Argue. You guys should see some of the bear and eagle pictures oh. that Bruce has collected over oh. the years. Amazing cameraman. He's a big fish. I'll get her head down in the water. Anybody guessing? 52. 52. 53. Wow, nice job. Right on the head. 53. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Oh, there you go, baby. It's a pleasure. She's gonna sit there for a couple minutes. Oh, Lordy. Bruce, this is not the way you wanted to do it with a hook in your leg. But I'll be honest with you, that fish came to the net so green that we had no, absolutely no choice. Mm -hmm. She was fighting at the side of the boat. Her head went down. She came around. And what happened was the net was in the water, and she come toward you. She kind of rushed you, and it had to collapse. The net had to collapse. It was simple as that. She ran into the net. Mm -hmm. You didn't run into her. She ran into the net. There she goes. Oh, unbelievable. Nice unbelievable. It's more fun than a hook in it. Bruce Fonis in the back of the boat from Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. We've been on fish up here. It's been bright, sunny skies. It has not been an easy bite. That's the kind of fish we were looking for. That's the kind of fish we delivered. We lost one, threw back in there, stuck that one. We're going to get we're going to get out of here and let you guys go. But next week, remember, practice CPR, catch, fold, and release. Future fishing is in your hands. We'll take you fishing someplace in God's green country where you can catch these big fish and put them back. That was a 53-inch muskie, folks. That's the kind of fish we're looking for. Yes. Oh. So my hat's off to, I tell you, my hat's off to Bruce in a big way. The spirits were high. Listen, it's an interesting situation. Let's break down that fish for a second before we go any further. The reason we were in there was the current was backing up, like I said earlier. 
the water temps that we had in there were in the early 70s. So quite frankly, we didn't see the feverish peak that we were looking for in the muskie. So the latest part of the day, we had a big blow. We had four days of wind coming out of the north and it was forcing all that water down the lake. So as soon as it laid flat, everything started to back back up again and it was an amazing situation you saw the first fish that we missed for chances are pretty good that there was two or three more with it i know there was two on there and we managed to get one of them so it's just um it's just an absolute miracle that we put that fish in the boat and like i said bruce is a trooper if i'd have knelt on that thing i guarantee you i'd be cussing a little bit i don't think we had three cuss words throughout the whole thing and they were mild by today's standards but that's real that's what we do when we shoot a real show and if anybody's been around us over the years um it, it is just what it is. We do it totally authentic. I wanted to show you that uncut clip with the exception of where we handed off the net so you could see all of what we go through. So with that being said, let's take a real close look here, real, real, uh, real close look here again at what we were talking about. This is where we were, this is where we were fishing and breaking down this part in here, this is where we're fishing this is another key element right here another key element right here and if you'll notice what I'm doing when I'm pulling these key elements I'm looking for stuff that lets me gun and run this particular spot right here I fish this spot probably six seven times a day this little inside turn here that's created by this reef section is absolutely fabulous no ifs ands or buts about it i won't move all the way up this because this is a very large structure um it's just for me it's just too large i can't pinpoint what i'm looking for on it others that like to fish the marlamore type fish could probably do real well there but it's not my cup of tea so with that being said um i just I just can't say enough about Bruce Fannis and uh, how good a trooper he is, a sportsman he is, and I'm going to show you a little bit more on what I'm talking about in just a minute. Bring it back. Oh, hold tight, hold tight. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here. You know, I've got a place, a very, very special place in my heart. It's Osborne Bay. It's an excellent uh Randy did a great job guiding service. Randy started taking us out when I was 10, and we've been catching big muskies ever since. The accommodations here are fantastic. Check out Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Come on, bring her back. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, muskie fishing's a tough deal, and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next ride, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. There, on your left, you can almost see it. One of the most magnificent sights on the planet, Lake Athabasca nestled just below the 60th parallel. Lake Athabasca hasn't changed in nearly a thousand years with its pristine shorelines pure crystal clear water you can actually drink, and countless fish. Boy, has she got fish that is for everyone willing to travel to Other Side River Lodge. From the magnificent world-class northern pike that prowl these waters to the oldest and biggest lakers on the globe, Athabasca has it all. Other Side River Lodge caters to the true sportsman seeking an all-American plan guided package with three incredible meals a day and memories you won't find anywhere else. Records have been broken by guests at Other Side River Lodge in the past. You could be next. Book your dream trip of a lifetime to Other Side River Lodge, where fishing dreams do come true. Call Cliff or Stella toll-free at 1-877-922-0957. Again, we invite you to interact with the show, folks. You can do it on the Fishing Sticks uh, Facebook page. Uh, chime in on there if you want. We'll try to answer your questions relative to the structures and stuff that we're talking about tonight. You can also email me. I'm watching all of this going on right now, so if you folks get that information over to us, we will deal with it. Um, that being said, let's move on because we're not by any means done. Now, you're going to see another fish. 
you're going to see a fish that means to me as much as any fish I've ever had come in the boat. Again, it's because of Bruce. Again, we fought, we fought the wind and the sun, and I'm telling you, it was windy, windy, windy for four days. When it backed off, we pulled up on that spot. Like I said, I was still eating a sandwich when we pulled up there. We didn't even eat dinner at the dock. I mean, literally, we, we were gunning and running right after dinner. And I pulled up on the spot and started working it, and, uh, well, you saw the results of that. But we came back the next day, after Bruce had had a chance to rest. So basically 36 hours after we got him out of the hospital. When I say out of the hospital, I'm talking about the hospital. After, after we put the fish back, uh, Bruce and I had to find our way up to Kenora and he went into the hospital and I don't know what his bill was, but it was somewhere in the $700 range. So consequently, that being said, you want to be cautious. The bulldog he had in the boat was laying behind the seat. It was laying in an area where most people, most people, you know, would think a lure would be comfortable sitting back there. It's out of the way. Nobody's going to get stepped on or anything. But when he come forward to net that fish, he just happened to come in contact with that needle sharp hook. And most of us as musky fishermen are making sure that our hooks are more than needle sharp, piercing leather, if you will. And, um, it, it got him. It's simple as that. And if I told you what his wife said, well, <laughs> that'd be a whole other situation. So let's go back and look at this map. All right, this is where Bruce and I are going to go the next time. Now, again, if you, if you understand how I like to choose my structures, I'm choosing structures that are small. I want to look for areas that I can go in, campaign them, and move out. The structure I'm shooting right here for you, well, this is what we were fishing, folks. This is an absolute magic spot. There is broken rock. There is boulder rock. There's current going through this area. There's cabbage in this area. And there's actually spike rushes that are built around some of these rocky structures in there. It's an amazing place. So, well, with that being said, let's see how well, uh, let's see how well Bruce recovers. No, I don't know who this is, but they're driving over some dangerous water. I don't know how close people pay attention to their navigation tools when they're going up these lakes, Can't but there's an awful the lot of structure shallow. beneath the surface. This boat that's coming up on us is literally running over one of the spots that we were going to fish when we were done here. They're close enough that they're pushing their wake on us right now. Bruce hasn't even made a cast yet. What in the world are they doing? Look out behind your bait, behind your bait, behind your bait. Oh, I guess he does have it out there. Now that's an oh, adrenaline pull right there, folks. All the walking disappeared out yeah, of that she's bait. 50 plus. He snapped at it. What the hell do these guys want? Let's just back off. Let's just leave it. Let's just leave it. Okay, we're going to work our way around this right now, okay? All right. Into the saddle. She's got to be, there's got to be, I would say any place between where our lures are going up into the saddle itself. When you pulled her up before that boat came in, yeah. she came right off of the edge of this rock here. Oh, really? Okay. That's where I looked down and said, there she is, there she is, there she is. Yeah. And what we got here is a little rock finger that comes off that island there, and there's a saddle to the next island. So there's oh. plenty of food shelf in here for these okay. fish. You want to throw straight back up in there, yep. come across that shallow saddle. I'll stay out here. That's where you had, exactly, that's where you had that fish up, right, right. there. Bruce said to me and when I he got a hold of me you, to come do this, she'll he go says, five I want a 50-incher. Is that possible? 
Be all right. and I said, absolutely. And that fish was catchable. Uh huh. There was very little messing around with her. She was catchable. Yeah. I think that a uh, little bit of cloud, blah, blah, cloud cover helped too. Get some of that intense. Oh, no question. Burning. No question. Furnace off of our backs for a couple minutes. I'm going to correct the boat a little bit here. We're only in five feet, but I need to go around this little tip. That is some dangerous water right there. But I can see a saddle all the way across here. It's the big boulders that we've been finding these fish in. Uh -huh. It's the same thing, big boulders. Saddles are probably one of the most productive areas uh -huh. that you can fish, especially in these low light periods. Because uh -huh. these fish will lay in these rocks. Okay. And when you get low light like this, they will come up and be a little bit Aggressive. cooperative. Yeah. You stick her on that chartreuse, and I guarantee you there'll be another chartreuse coming out. <laughs> You know, we got the 53 the other night. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, actually, we got a 53 and a 200 pounder. And me. <laughs> biggest release of the week. The biggest release of the week. Let's get you a release. Here we go, here we go. Just stay with her, stay with her, stay with her. Keep your rod low. That's a 50, that's yep. a 50. If you need to, free spool. If yep. you need to, free spool. Free spool right now. I'm out of the way of the net. Yep. That's your 50. Keep your line tight, yep. keep your line tight. Oh, baby. Ooh, on Fran's fishing rod, too. That's okay. That's okay. Run towards you, Bob? Yep, if you can. I'll let her go her way. I'll just let her do what she wants for a second here. <sighs> Come on, fishy. Okay, bring her this way if you can. We're going to be on the reef. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, buddy. Come on, girl. Just want to go. Come on, girl. Come on, Come on girl. Let's see Mr. Bob here. This way. Let's see Mr. Bob. Woo! Okay, let me get off the reef, okay? Yep. Let me get off the reef. Okay, we're definitely on the reef, so give me a second. Let me slide off. Your first 50, big guy. <laughs> what? The first time that came up and snapped, just like one of my Labradors, it went just when they, like this. When they pulled up on us, and I'm going, oh, we're not going to get a second shot at her, but she came right back. Okay, I need to get out here where you can drift. Oh, man. What a blast of the ticker that Yeah, was. this is a solid 50. It's a good fish. It's a good fish. This is the way you need to do it, right here. I'll tell you what I want to do. Okay, get all that out of the way. I'm going to hang on to her. Yep. Um, your camera and stuff, you want to take it out of there? Yeah, you're looking at 51, maybe 52. Really? Yeah. Wow. Don't worry, I got her. Set your rod down. Go ahead. Take your time. We got her. We own her. She's ours. Okay, what take do you do to quit shaking? Okay. <laughs> that, the only thing you got to do with that is a zoom. Only That's a zoom? Partially to press the trigger and it locks your flash. Okay, great. Or locks the okay, so set that on the seat. Okay. Because what we're going to do is cut hooks, all right? Yeah. Get your glove ready, because I know you're going to pick her up with that glove on. Changing your glasses? Yeah, I'm going to put these on. Well, what do you think about fishing up here now? What a hoot. You got a hook in your leg the first time, and now you're... Now I got a hook in the fish. Now you got a hook in the fish, and it's a big girl. Was it worth the run? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, here's what I want you to do. Get your, yep. get your extractors ready. Get your hook cutters ready. 
You want me to uh, tell you what? I want you to hold the handle. I'll do all the cutting on her. Okay. I'm yeah. gonna hand you the hand. Okay. Yes, sir. I want you to just kind of kneel and hold on to her. Yep. Okay. She's a big girl. Just keep her head in the water. Oh, yep. Yeah. No, she's fine. She's down in the water. She's 52, 53. <laughs> oh, thank you. Please yes. tell me it's bigger and I'll keep shaking like I'm out in the wind. Okay, she's in the net good. We own her. Keep an eye on that thing. Is she powerful or what, huh? On my wife's muscular on. Yep, and she's going to love you. All right. An oar forever. There's one. There's the wind in that there. Let's whack them all in that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, shake for me. Holy shake for smoly. me. Shake for me. There you go. This is the way I like to do it. Get rid of the hooks. Yep. Get that out of harm's way. Yes. You gotta know we ended up in the hospital the other night. <laughs> Getting in a hurry. Yeah, you can't. Just relax, take your time. Once she's in the net, you own her. And we own this one. Oh, man. And she's a good one. I've never seen a fish in my life snap like a throwing a dog a treat. Well, this one did, didn't it? It, I, I, on the water, I mean, it just bit. Yeah. It just bit water like that. Well, we pulled up on here, and I was kind of hoping she would be here, or one of the big ones would be here. And then that boat came in on us oh, to I say know, hi I to know, us. I know, I know. And all they wanted to do was be polite. They Correct. wanted to come in and Correct. say hi to us. Correct. And when they did, and then the fish came, and I'm going, oh, no, don't, don't, don't do this now. Whatever you do, don't do this now. Okay, she is free. Now give me the handle back. Okay, now before you lift her, before you lift her, I want to take the rim, hold the rim, hang on to the rim. Now you got control because I need to get cameras up here, okay? Give me a second. We're in a good drift. We're in good, good shape. So just give me a second. Uh, we're in very, very good shape. We own her. She's in the net. We have total control. At least you do. Oh, yes. Like now, I'm going to take my glasses off. I'm going to just a second. I'm going to have you explain. Okay, if this. you want to fuss with that, you can. The only thing you'll have to do is simply, um, <sighs> there's one focal ring back there. I'm sorry, there's one ring to zoom. When I'm looking through here, yeah, I've got to take my hat it. off. You can zoom it and partially depress the trigger and it'll lock the focus. And, you know, okay, aim, my, because okay, it it'll lock the focus because I'm blind without my glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got a lot of film in here. I want a picture of you sitting there with your fish. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do now. You're going to lift her. I'm going to shoot the digital first, okay? Because I want it to set for a second while I go to the second one. All this stuff is ready to go here. You want me to take the handle? Now, when wow. you get a hold of her, I want you to hang on tightly, okay, with your hand. Don't let her fall. So hang on to her tightly, but go ahead. I got the net. She's not going anywhere. Come here, buddy. Now, uh, 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 open the gill. Open her all the way up. Right here, right? Open the flap down, but there you go. No, no, next one, next one, next one. You're still not there. Other side, other side. Right here? No, 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 no. Go back down to where it's meeting the body. Yep. You see that flap right there? Right here? Nope, the next one in. This one here. No, 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 right there. Okay. There you go. Now, get a hold of her. Okay. Careful with the teeth. I don't like Kenora Hospital. Oh, Bob. What did you get me into? Got you into what you were looking for. What is that lure called? Oh, yeah, jackpot. Okay, I want you to hang on to her now. It ought to focus. Yeah, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I can't believe this. <laughs> Put her back. I think so. I'm blind. I can't see. That's right. Okay, go ahead. Set yes, her back. Sir. Right, like you told me how to do it. Yep. Just set her back. Tail first. Yep. Tail first. Do you want to get up? I want on. you to hold on to the tail. Yep. You want to tape on her? Yeah, I'll come. Uh, I'll come down there and help you. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so let me go on the other side of you. Holy Hannah, that's a big. 
Franny wanted her graphite for her birthday. She got it. <laughs> okay. You're into your big fish, big guy. You're into your big fish. She got a little blood on her tail. Not a problem. Okay, I want you to take this to her nose. Okay. Yes. Right in her nose. All the way to the nose? Yep, at the nose. 51. Wait, try that again. Just make sure I got Okay, I'm right at the nose of my glove. Okay. 51 and a half. Do one and a half, big guy. Bring her head. She's gonna yep. send her head out. Yeah. I get that. Send her head out. out of my glove. Arm. Okay. You're okay. Pull your hand toward me. There you go. There you go. Take her back. Put her center in. Okay. Push your head out. Pretty good fish. And she ate you like a champ, didn't she? <laughs> well. Oh man. These are pretty hard to catch. She drive me out here, told me where to throw. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how to set the hook. Come on, have these jackpot. Well, you did that one right. Uh, trust me, you did that one right. Come on, baby, let's see you have some power in your tail here. Oh, she yeah. She's not going to go away hard. What a beauty. Yeah, not going to go away hard. Just kind of leave her set there for a second. All we're going to do is just, when I tell you to, we're going to sit her down. We're just going to let her swim away from the boat. She's not going to burst away hard, okay? Now, I'm looking for her pectoral fins to get s blazers. Or? Yeah, no, she's fine. Kind of hold her still. Just kind of leave her set. Okay, let her go. She'll slide out. Oh, okay. right now? Yeah, she'll slide out. Yeah, she's fine. She's fine. Let her get her. She's, she, she's gonna, as soon as she lets go of you, she's gonna go, okay? Oh, you can feel that power in her yep. tail. Yeah, she's gonna go. Oh, man. 51 and a half, Bruce! <laughs> Every time I think about walking away from muskies and going doing largemouth bass or something else, this happens. Thrill of a lifetime, giant fish, that's what it's all about. Practice CPR, catch, funnel, release. The future of fishing is in your hands. Next time you go fishing, set her back. Somebody else will catch her. Everybody take, has a good time. Did you have a good time? Take him with you. Take him with you. <laughs> you bet. Thank Man, you very much. Congratulations. Yeah, that's Personal a best. Yeah, that's Con a hoot. Folks, I got to tell you, we slid up to this spot. I had it, thought we had it all to ourselves. We were nice and quiet, and all of a sudden, a boat come by who knew who we were. They watch our show every week. The very first cast we made on it, Bruce has got this fish coming, and it's underneath. And Lo, I says, Bruce, we've got to take the lure away from the fish. Let's do it. We'll go talk to him for a second. We'll come back and see if we got her. Good Lord gave us that fish. We'll see you folks next week. <laughs> you know, honestly, the good Lord gives us every fish we catch. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's two splendid fish, folks, out of the same part of the basin of the lake. This lake has got enormously big fish, and there's lots of them. It's got it. Thousands and thousands of small reefs, sunken islands, saddles, underwater saddles like we were fishing there. It's got island clusters. It's got weed beds. It's got everything you can imagine from dark water to clear water. Everything you want to find is right at the doorsteps of Witch Bay Camp on Lake of the Woods. And when, when Bruce and I or anybody goes up there with me, we have a chance to move around this lake. And we're, we're able to fish different methods, different ways. And all we did tonight was show you a little bit of what goes on on the water in a real fishing show. Now, Bruce bounced back. He a little bit of time to heal from the, from the hook going through the kneecap. We didn't get out of the hospital till 3.30 or 4 in the morning. And he slept in the next day, kind of recouped, and then the next day rebounded with his 51 and a half inch fish. Now, I don't know anybody that wouldn't be happy with that fish. I don't know anybody that wouldn't expect that to be the fish of a lifetime. It is what it is, and Bruce is really good for it. Folks, I want to tell you something. We're moving forward now. Seasons are open. Fishing has started. Uh, musky fishing started in certain, some parts of the United States. Bass is open. You can fish bass right now in Minnesota, but you can't keep them. Um, in other words, we're out on the water, and we're starting to capture some video and capture some pictures. There's two things to remember. When you hold a camera, whether it's your iPhone or anything, and you're holding it up in this manner, that's called a portrait mode, okay? This is called a landscape mode. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because when you're out there on the water and you're taking your pictures, if you want to submit them to us here at Fishing Sticks TV, try to stay in the landscape mode. Television is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So if you're taking pictures in the portrait mode, it's hard to cover the screen and still identify everything in your photo or your video. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to 
shoot video. We're trying to get people to shoot pictures. We're trying to people get people to bring those stories into fishing sticks and become part of what we're doing. That's the whole agenda here. The motive is to get people engaged, to get you interlocking with us on the websites, talking to us on the telephone, chiming in on the emails. This is what we're trying to do. Next week, I'm trying to line up Randy Tyron from Century Lodge, and we're going to be talking a little bit about smallmouth, of all things, because quite frankly, the smallmouth fishery up there is off the charts. If I can get Steve or Gail on next week with us, I'd like to talk a little bit about the smallmouth off the shores of Witch Bay Camp. And if I can get my friend of mine, Kevin Goldberg, out on the East Coast to respond. Kevin's got an interesting fishery out there in the east part of the United States. He's offered to share some of that with us. And let's don't forget about Scotty. If we can get Scotty on, on with us, Scotty Peterson on with us with the electronics, start talking about this new technology and stuff, that's what we're trying to do. That's the agenda we're trying to go. But to do that, folks, we need viewers. We need a lot of viewers. We need you to share this material. We need you to spread it to your fans, your friends, your groups. We need you to help us grow. Because without the growth, we're just sort of doing it for the fun of it. And we want to do it for a much, much bigger reason. We want to get people involved. We're going to run this show shorter tonight than we did last week. Last week we went an hour and a half long. And we go back and look at the analytics. We can find out what part of the show you watched, what part of the show you didn't watch, how much you watched. And we're going to learn as we move forward what to do in the show. With that being said, I, I, just, I just want to say there's probably a hundred thousand reasons why somebody wants to get up and go fishing and one of those reasons is right here bring her back oh hold on all right hi everyone bob mason over here you know i've got a place a very very special place in my heart it's osborne bay it's been excellent uh randy did a great job guiding service randy started taking us out when i was 10 catching big muskies ever since. The accommodations here are fantastic. Check out Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Come on, bring her back. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, muskie fishing's a tough deal. And the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Folks, tell you what, we'll see you next week. God bless and thanks for joining us on this week's show. If you got any suggestions or questions, get them to us via email, via uh, the Facebook page, and help us grow. Help us move this thing along and see if we can make it the best show possible. there on your left you can almost see it one of the most magnificent sights on the planet Lake Athabasca nestled just below the 60th parallel Lake Athabasca hasn't changed in nearly a thousand years with its pristine shorelines pure crystal clear water you can actually drink and countless fish boy has she got fish that is for everyone willing to travel to other side river lodge from the magnificent world-class northern pike that prowl these waters to the oldest and biggest lakers on the globe Athabasca has it all. Other Side River Lodge caters to the true sportsman seeking an all-American plan guided package with three incredible meals a day and memories you won't find anywhere else. Records have been broken by guests at Other Side River Lodge in the past. You could be next. Book your dream trip of a lifetime to Other Side River Lodge where fishing dreams do come true. Call Cliff or Stella toll-free at 1-877-922-0957.